General Motors downgraded to equal weight at Morgan Stanley today, the firm cutting its price target to 55 from 75. We've made it our call of the day. The stock's down uh, 3%. Uh, Jim Labenthal's on the phone now. I think he's on the phone. No, there he is. I see his face. Hey, Jim. I'm here with you, Scotty. Let's talk about this. But 20 Adam bucks. Jonas is a big guy at a big firm. Yeah, yeah. He's a, look, he's a big guy at a big firm, all right? So when he speaks, there's a lot of brokers out there and advisors who go out and sell the stock. That's a mistake here. And we've got to go back a week. These guys had great earnings, GM. They really did. And the stock was down. You have to ask why. And the reason is certain analysts got way ahead of their skis in terms of what they expected. So even though GM beat and guided above consensus, some analysts were disappointed. Now, today we know who that is. At least one of them is Adam Jonas. But I think he's working with his heart and not his mind here. Stock selling at seven times earnings, and that basically is assigning no value to Cruise, which is driving, which is now has paying customers in driverless taxis in San Francisco. It, it's basically valuing Bright Drop at zero, which is already delivering electric vans to FedEx and now has Walmart signing up. There's a lot of good things here. By the way, the legacy business, they're increasing production 25%. Seven times earnings? I, I just I think he's acting with his heart and not his mind. So you got to get past today. But this is a great buying opportunity. I'm adding. You're adding today. I'm adding today this morning. OK. Um, I mean, he said this. It, this is the downgrade is is triggered by a lower than expected guide. Right. And also talking lower about than, the lower than his expectation. I'm sorry to interrupt. Lower than his expectations. Not the consensus. He Look, he got out there ahead of himself. He got way in front of his skis, and he's pulling back. It sounds like he's a little ticked off. I mean, I read the note. He sounds a little angry. I, I think he needs to look in the mirror, honestly. Jeez, Jim. I mean, we're talking about Adam Jonas. I mean, I know like, he's a big dude at a the, big firm. Right. Well, I you, know. But you said that, and then you poured water all over him. Dumped him. He dumped, I, dunked on like, him. Look, I call it like I see, I call, I call it, like I see it Scott. I actually like Adam. I, I really do respect oh, him. I just think he's making the wrong call here. Here we go with the disclaimer. No, I think he's making the wrong call. Can I be can I be any clearer, Scott? No, no you're just teasing me. No, but you I'm didn't... being very clear. I think he's making the wrong call. Okay, you didn't let me finish though, and you say he's doing this with his heart, not his head. I mean he did use his head to come up with some of the metrics to guide him through the downgrade in which he says, while the sum of the parts potential, you interrupted me when I was reading this, while some of the parts potential still exists, we see a less clear path to realization. You just dismiss that out of hand? That's all hard, um, no head? I, listen, I don't want to, look, I don't want to be dismissive, but I disagree, all right? And here's part of his thesis is that this year is peak earnings. And I've got to tell you, number one, I don't think that's the case. I think this economic expansion has a lot of legs based on infrastructure and all the capex that's going on, all those semiconductor plants. You know contractors need their, their Silverado pickup trucks. But even if this is peak earnings, this is going to be one hell of an earnings year for GM. I wouldn't dismiss that out of hand. Josh, you own it. Yeah, I'm with Jim. I just don't know. I have a philosophical question. What is even the point of this? Why, why, do you, why do you ride a stock down 22% with a buy rec from a record high, no fundamental change whatsoever, decide to do a sum of the parts valuation change in, in what you think it's worth? What, this, is, this is why, if you want to know why there's so much distrust among individual investors for sell-side analysts and brokerage firms and Wall Street, because it's just stupid. Let, like, at least wait for the stock to come back a little bit or, or do it at a high then, like do it after it runs up 20%. I have no idea what benefit this is other than trade, uh, trading commissions being generated on the desk because they said something new or something provocative. Honestly, okay. it's, it's a clown grade. It's such a waste of time. All right, look, I, I don't know Jeez, if Jonas- I think I threw shade. I don't know if Jonas is booked on, <laughs> on any programs coming up, but I- I would assume that if he is, it's not he, personal. It's just, it's just this. They do this. They do this on Wall Street all the time. It's, it, it doesn't benefit investors who are following the research. And I, like, if, if something fundamental had changed, it was a clown grade, say, okay, but it's not personal. That, all they're right. doing their job. They're doing their job. Okay. They're doing their job. But in this case, it just makes no sense to me. Okay. Uh, Farmer Jim, thank you. It's good to see you.